Hey everybody, uh, welcome to the end of day 17 of our Legends of Novus Kickstarter. Uh, it's been an interesting day, it had a lot of uh, cool things happening today. Uh, first off, uh, 240 some backers now and 12,700 Canadian raised. Uh, so still sitting at about 37%, not a huge increase. Uh, but we are seeing uh, a bit more increase in the number of followers to the project, which means uh, maybe people just aren't ready to commit yet or they want to hear more about what's going to come in the podcasts or in potential website posts or um, even at the Gamma Trade Show on Monday. So I think there's a lot coming for Novus, but um, in terms of actual increase in backers, it's not been uh, too uh, much of an increase yet. So who knows what the next few days will bring. Uh, keep in mind all these podcasts are completely unscripted, so it's me just trying to roll off the tongue, uh, trying to be natural and let you guys know this is all genuine. This is me trying to share a game with you and share it with the world in its most genuine form, and that's from the ground up. Uh, so in light of that, I wanted to talk a bit about how the game started and where it's gone from here. And you may have heard some of that on some of the podcasts. Uh, some podcasts will be coming out in the next few days. There's one from, um, well, the, the one from um, We're Not Wizards, which uh, was released today, and I'll include a link to that at the end of these update notes. Uh, but there's also a podcast coming from uh, The Gamer Relief, Game Leaf. Uh, I apologize if I pronounce that wrong, but I'll put it right in the notes as well. And then there's going to be another one from the Brawlin Brothers, and they uh, do podcasts about board games and the community all the time. So that'll probably be released on Tuesday. So lots of cool things happening. Uh, it's been uh, really exciting to be able to talk to all these different individuals in the gaming world and share my feelings about Novus and where it started. Uh, but just from a personal note, uh, from me to you, uh, Legends of Novus started right here in my house at my kitchen table after an experience at a local game store playing a game of Munchkin and deciding Munchkin was not the game for me but it inspired me to want to build a better game uh, a game where you can do essentially D&D &D and fantasy gaming in a in a deck and go from there so originally Legends of Novus was just a card game uh, it was just a deck of cards that people played with and if you watch the first um, video that I have on YouTube linked of the uh, Gamesmith's playtesters, or I think I have it linked in one of my um, blog notes, but you'll see that they played an entire game for about two hours with just a deck of cards that they shared. And what we, what I discovered from that and what they helped me identify is that there needed to be more. There needed to be more differentiation from Munchkin itself, because that's not what my game was intended to be and more exploration and so that's where the world map came into play um, but not only did the the game concept change the name changed as well so originally when i put this game together um, i decided to call it champions of curse um, kind of a, a alteration of the name earth and instead of the word legends it originally started with the name champions uh, and then a game came along on game crafter that i read about called um, Legends of Curse, I believe it was called, or Heroes of Curse, um, and that just made me have to scrap this entire idea and figure out something new, and that's where Legends of Novus was born, uh, trying to think of a new world, a new place, and kind of googling up different words, and uh, decided to look up the Latin word for new, and that's what Novus was, so it's a new world, uh, Novus, and instead of champions, becoming legends, because that sounded even more heroic and exciting. And Legends of Nova started as a magic set editor site where I put all the car cards, ideas that I had in my head uh, and put them into this magic set editor website from, um, I can send you the link to that too because it's a really good game design website. Uh, you don't have to use it to build magic cards, you can use it to build any cards you want and they automatically print at the right size which for a new game designer who didn't yet have Adobe or um, Krita or any of that stuff, it was fantastic to just get my head onto my cards. Uh, so I'll show you a picture of that here. Hopefully I get that timing right because um, I don't have any printed cards like that anymore. Uh, but from there I decided I needed to have my own graphic design. It couldn't be a magic card backing. Uh, so I came up with a, an idea for a hexagonal card, believe it or not. And um, looking at it now it looks pretty ridiculous, but uh, this was my original creature card design. A lot of text box, a hexagonal image for the for where the art would go and the rest just kind of look magic-esque. 
So I strayed a little bit, but not as far as I needed to. And that was the same for the reward cards or equipment cards, that um, pentagonal image on that one. So each card type had a different shape around the art. Um, but it really took away, and that's what Andrea helped me identify, is that that shape is awkward to design in, and it takes away from the art altogether. You focus more on the frame than you do on the art inside. Not that this was art, this was just free um, images that I was using to figure out my game. But um, uh, that's what it was. And then the original creature cards, uh, my very first creature cards, I, um, or not creature cards, Encount or character cards I had designed my own art for and realized that I'm way out of touch with the artist I once was. I actually really was a, a decent artist back in the day, but I don't have the time or ability to both design a game and do the art for a game. So um, here's an example of some of my, my, my five art pieces. So that's me trying to design my own images and realizing, no, that's not the kind of game I want to have. Um, so from there, I uh, used some uh, freeware art from the internet, and this was my original uh, character card designs. And it wasn't with a booklet at the time, it was just a character card and the nine box uh, sheet of paper for where everything went. Um, and a lot of the concept of the actual classes remain the same, still the five core classes, and they each have a static ability and a triggered ability, uh, but everything else has evolved since then. Uh, but even back then, the idea of dual classes existed and where you could become a fighter to become a fighter or mage or you could become a druid to become a, a druid thief or, or whatever those things are with their specialized names. And then uh, locations from the beginning always did have cards instead of a location guide, but through multiple playtests it was determined that as handy as cards are, having yet another deck to sift through and shuffle or uh, read through was challenging, so the decision was to put it in a guide. Um, there's still the potential that, that that the game box could come with a guide and um, location cards, but that depends on if we can far exceed the actual uh, initial funding goal, because it will cost more, but the more copies we can sell, um, the more we can create for the game itself. Um, and then uh, from that from that initial design, uh, here's an example of an encounter card or an adventure card back in the original set. So again, that was a different card type, so I had an oval instead of a hexagon or a pentagon. Uh, but that idea has been totally scrapped. And um, then we evolved to kind of a... Oh, I do have an example here of the, um, the next phase, which returned back to a more magic look. Um, so again, the square text box. The armor image we still use and those icons we still use, but not that very uniform frame. We went more to um, a frame-free design in the final iteration. And here's an example of an actual card that was created through the Game Crafter. I've got decks of those hiding somewhere, but um, really committed to the new image now. Uh, so here's an example of progression chart of the creature from start to where it's come to now. Um, I'll pop that image on the screen because it's not printed out, it's just a bunch of digital images together, but you can see from uh, start to finish kind of how we've come along. And that's through a lot of uh, discussion on some of the websites for tabletop game design and through feedback from players and through personal views after printing cards how they looked. Uh, so hopefully you like how the images are now as opposed to how they began. Um, kind of embarrassing how the first cards looked, but you have to start somewhere, and that's where it started. Uh, other than that, I mean, I've talked to you before about how the world map came to be, um, and how characters have evolved, and how the creatures have evolved. So um, lots of growth in the game since it began, and that was the beginning of Novus. Um, what else do I want to share with you today? Uh, we, I, I've mentioned in the or in the, the notes that the Gamma Trade Show is coming up on Monday, and so Monday uh, I really want to thank Dave Bryanton from Warp Comics and Games in Edmonton. He owns three different game stores there, and I once worked for him for a couple of years uh, at his comics comic and game store, and uh, he took the time out to spend with me to do a couple of play tests, and he's taking that game to the Gamma Trade Show. So really. Um, interested to see what kind of feedback it gets from a live demo 
at a major convention as opposed to the just the small time stuff that I've been able to do in Calgary and in Olds here. So, all right, we'll share some more with you tomorrow. Uh, I've got um, some more links that should be coming up over the coming days. Once those are available, we'll share them with you. Uh, but yeah, definitely check out the We're Not Wizards podcast so you can hear a bit of the questions. I really love how Richard Simpson presents himself and adds that humor that you don't hear as much in some of the other podcasts. And of course, um, having the, the different continents and our dialects are different uh, really makes it even that much more interesting. So thank you again, Richard. Hats off to you and your wonderful podcast, We're Not Wizards. And we'll talk to you a bit tomorrow. Um, I'll have to decide what the next topic is. I've got a few of them mapped out. Um, given that my main prototype is now uh, going to make its way to Reno, uh, I'm going to do probably tabletop simulator examples over the next few days. So look forward to talking to you more in the next um, segment of our updates. Have a wonderful day.